a massive ask, not just for Tyson Fury, but for his trainer, Ben Davison, who turns 26 just two days before fight night. How would you have approached that as a 25-year-old trainer? With total belief and uh, total ignorance to any naysayers. But there are naysayers out there. And there always will be. There always will be, but how will Ben deal with it, or how should he deal with it? What would you advise him to do? Understand that the fighter that he's working with has got grade and has got experience, and he's already been there. And, and if he has any moments of doubt, to lock himself in his room by himself, overcome it, and remind himself that the fella that he's working with knows what he's doing. And that in itself gives a coach um, immense confidence. What do you think's the most important thing that's come out of the 12 months? Is it the weight loss? Do you think it's the relationship between the two? If they are happy working together, that in itself is probably worth more than any technical input or any experience that can be handed down because I'm a firm believer that a happy fighter is a fighter that will perform. Michael, it brings me perfectly on to, to, to you. When you selected Adam to be your coach, you probably looked at his track record and his experience. When Tyson looked at Ben's track record, it's not as in-depth by any means as, as Adam. But as Adam says, it probably worked. I mean, how do you see that dynamic working in terms of Ben and Tyson? And is it something, it's obviously something that you wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily go for someone who hasn't got that resume. Yeah, that's true. You know, I, first off, I looked at Adam's track record and you, you, you can't deny how good of a coach he was. But at the same time, another thing I looked at, which Adam touched on, was the connection he had with his fighters. And I felt I needed a coach who had that kind of connection where it's more than boxing, it's, it's, it's like, kind of friendship in your head, know, knowing what they're doing. He knows what I'm going to do, I know what he's going to say. So it's stuff like that. And I think if they have that kind of connection, it'll be good for them. Adam, with regards to Tyson's extreme weight loss, 150 odd pounds that he's lost, how important is it now that that's out of the way, now the conditioning to an extent is out of the way and it allows them to focus on strategy and, and planning the fight against Wilder? There's two things really, for, for in my opinion, that are unforgivable when, when a fighter turns up to a gym wanting to prepare for a fight, and that's uh, fitness and weight, because anyone can get fit and anyone can get their weight to a healthy level. And he's a big man, so he's gonna put on weight a lot quicker proportionally than, than, a, than a smaller man. But also, actually, being overweight in the long run can help you because, essentially, you spent a lot of your training time with a rucksack on your back because you're constantly lugging around more weight than you will do when you're performing. So if anything, sort of starting overly heavy will help him in the long run because he's actually done the grueling part. Michael, with regards to Tyson and where he's at from a mental, from a psychological standpoint, where he's come over depression and that, and that kind of stuff, how important do you think it is that he's got a job at, of this magnitude now to focus on in terms of keeping him on the straight and narrow? In the past, you've seen when he's had the step up that he done it, like against Klitschko, he went in there and, and done the business when you know, all the odds were stacked against him. At the same time, you can look at it like, you know, the first, the first fight was all about just getting the weight off. Second fight was just about getting the rounds in and this fight is the, the first real fight they're going to have together, so the ability to come through what he's came through will, will stand him in good stead against someone like Wilder who's relentless, reckless uh, and very unorthodox.